ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا انه من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وادى الامانة ونصح الامة وكشف الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون In the name of Allah God Almighty the beneficent the merciful the source of mercy and affection the first and the last the one from whom we come and to whom we return in the name of he I start bearing witness that there is no God but he and that Prophet Muhammad may the peace and blessings of God Almighty be upon him as his last messenger and prophet Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi and I pray to Allah God Almighty that he sends his blessings upon the family of Prophet Muhammad and upon all of those who follow in his footsteps till the day of judgment Allahumma ameen dear brothers, dear sisters Honorable guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May the peace and blessings of God be upon each and every soul in this room. I pray to Allah uh, that you're all well today. And I uh, want to take the next brief moments uh, to hopefully take us on a mini, tiny, little, uh, few minute journey. Uh, let it be a journey of reflection upon questions that I, I pray that I and you are asking ourselves. Um, as we take those steps in life, because life is very busy. And we're coming to a very critical juncture now. Uh, it's the juncture of a turn. It's a turn from a, a critical time period to another critical time period. Interesting enough, as Muslims, we're experiencing it through the change in the lunar <coughs> calendar here. We just commenced or started a new Hijri year, the year of the migration of Prophet Muhammad, and we're embarking upon a new year, 1434. But it's also almost coinciding with the start of a new year, the traditional year. Uh, 2013 is about to start. And I, I'm asking you, dear brothers and sisters, that as we come to a critical juncture like this in our times, where you see the, the, the closure of a chapter in your life about to happen, and the start of another, how many of us are going to look forward to that opportunity, to that time to ask some questions about last year? So let me start this sermon with few questions. And I want to ask as I recite to you, as I share with you those, those questions, how many of us are asking them? So first question, what was this last year, 2012 about for you? Not the world, not the international events. For you personally in terms of your growth and development. What did you take from, la from that year into 2013? If we are blessed to live to see 2013. Another question that I have for you, what lessons have you learned? Because I tell you, the capacity for success or failure in life hinges fundamentally on the capacity to learn the lessons of life. It's not a question of knowledge or information. All of us have knowledge of information. All of us hear talks. All of us attend classes. All of us are all over the internet, learning left and right. The question is, once we find something sacred, once we define a priority in our lives and we feel it's worth a pursuit. Do we act on it or not? So I'm asking you here, how many of us have learned lessons from 2012 for our own growth so that we change our lives in 2013? And I want to ask you another question. Is it possible that perhaps, perhaps we're not paying attention to the right things in 2012 in our lives? Is it possible that we're indifferent to the sacred priorities that we held so high? in our lives. Many of us claim to have priorities. But very few of us are actually making the effort to spend the time and, and the resources and the energy on those supposed priorities. How many of us, how many of us have indeed worked on those priorities? And how many of us are still continuing to put them on a shelf? What lessons have we learned? I tell you what, 2012 has passed or is about to pass and it reminds me of an incredible symbol that God Almighty presents to us that we walk and observe on a daily basis. Look at the plants and the trees and the flowers and the roses. Something beautiful about a rose. I wish I had the opportunity to bring a rose with me, but there are no roses in this season. 
So what's special about a rose? If you look at a rose, and we're all in love with roses and flowers, they're symbolic of something very deep, profound. But look at the beautifully designed petals of a rose. You know, when the rose, with its striking beauty and breathtaking, uh, 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 mesmerizing colors, as soon as it blooms, what happens with it? You notice that the very petals that have, that have attracted your heart and eyes and made you fall in love with the rose, those petals start drying up and changing from the brilliant red that struck that sense of beauty in your heart and, 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 and love, right, and gave you that sense of hope, it starts changing from red to brown. Is it not true? And before you know it, that very petal of that rose that you fall in love with starts to dry up and become like something that is, that is about to wither away at the touch of a finger. Touch of a finger. You know when the rose changes colors, you just merely have to touch it and you see it withering and crumbling. Is it not true? And there's nothing on earth that you can do. No water, no change of location, no change of soil that can save that petal. Is it not true? It withers, it goes away, and it's not going to come back. But before you know it, this, the next petal will experience the same thing, and the third, and the fourth, and before you know it, the whole rose is gone. But we fall in love with that rose, and we don't want to let go of it. That last year, that last year, 2012, was one of those petals in your life. It crumbled and withered away, and I'm asking you, what have you taken from that experience? And did that petal that you just saw in front of your own eyes passing away, did it mean anything to you? Did it strike a lesson? Did it teach us anything? Was it a sign for us? What we learned from the Quran, what we learned from the Quran is that the very roses that we observe on a daily basis are pointing us to something. That indeed everything withers away. Every single thing that we possess or that we yearn to possess in this life will crumble, dry up like a tree or like a rose and wither away. And that there's only one thing that lasts the creator of it all, the grantor of the very gift, gift that you're falling in love with, the creator of the rose itself, Allah, God Almighty, is the only one that lasts. And everything withers away, including our own souls and our own bodies. The question is, what lessons again are we taking from all of this? Something interesting happens when we actually look at that rose and we look at the petals withering away. What well, notice when you see them withering away? And this is symbolic of everything that we're attaching our hearts to. Think about the career. Think about the <coughs> loved one that you've pinned your entire hope and love and affection on in this life. Think of the car. Think of the status and the rank and the title. Think of the, th the things that we dedicate our energy, resources, affection and devotion entirely on. Indeed, we're spending our time and energy on something. The question is when we see those petals withering, the very thing that we're spending our time and energy and, 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 and uh, uh, affection on, the devotion on, when it starts withering away, crumbling before your eyes, what happens to your heart? Many of us will experience tremendous pain and torment. When you see the rose withering, you don't want it to wither. You don't want it to leave. You don't want to see any problem with that career. You don't want to see any problem with the supposedly that person that you fought, fell in love with, but they turned their backs on you. Indeed, everything will leave and will depart. Even the very figures that we adore in this life. In our very culture, look at the movie stars. There's, uh, there are even physical manifestations of this act of withering. Look at movie stars and how much people adore and worship movie stars. We see their faces on television and in the movies and on the, you know, on, 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 on the cover of magazines. The very faces of beauty that everybody adores and worships. What happens with age? The very faces that, 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 that strike this beauty, you'll see them starting to wrinkle, dry up, change colors like a rose, and before you know it, they're dead and we're dead. The, the geniuses of this earth who have invented and came up with the most astonishing accomplishments. Some actual scientists have experienced this. Everybody gets older, and the petals that, 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 that stand for the years that they've lived in this life, one by one, they're withering away and they're getting older. Before you know it, they might be sitting somewhere trying to remember their names after the very minds that they were blessed with invented the astonishing things that we experience every single day. They cannot even remember their own names at times and ask doctors about the cases they see with many of the, patient, you know, with many of the patients that they deal with. 
tremendous expressions of loss. But what happens, once again, I ask you, when we start losing those things, what happens to the heart? One of the tremendous things that we're blessed with is that we have this internal mass, internal energy, internal instinct, internal something, substance, that wants to give itself to something. You want to love. You want to give your affection and devotion to something. Is it not true? Just as the eye yearns to see and the ears yearn to hear, there is something inside of it that yearns to want to give itself to something as part of what we call in Islam fitrah, your nature. That's your own nature. It wants to give itself to something, to devote itself to something. Well, what happens when we start devoting that very thing inside of us to the wrong things? And that can be manifested in so many examples. Us spending our time on pursuits that are detrimental to our being, and we do this all the time, squandering our times and activities that are not well suited to us. Doing the wrong things. Spending time with the wrong people, right? Wasting our lives away. Insisting on particular addictions, all kinds of addictions, falling in love with the wrong things, adoring people or things beyond the limits of reason. So many things that destroy us and we know what happens when we're doing them. You're essentially giving yourself away to something that is not the intention or that should not be the destination. Your internal self wants to give itself to something, but if it's not given to the right thing, what happens? torment and pain right away. And how many of us would think that when we do the wrong thing in our lives, or when we give our energies and focus and devotion and affection to the wrong things in life, when we pin our hopes on the wrong things in life, how many of us would think that that very nature that you have that causes you that sense of pain or that sense of guilt is a blessing? It's a blessing. I want to, to ask you a question. When we experience physical pain, we're not happy, we're, we're very uncomfortable, we want the pain to go away. But what is the pain pointing you to? It's an alarm that says, wake up, you have something underlying, an underlying thing in your own body that is causing this pain. It needs treatment. It needs attention right away. What happens when we ignore the pain? Well, the cancer might grow and grow. Before you know it, it, it takes you out, devastates you, kills you. So you need it to take care of the pain right away and go seek medicine. Go get a diagnosis. We do this physically all the time. But what we don't do is when we experience the internal pain and the torment that results from, let's say, losing something that you adore, from being disappointed in life, from your expectations not being felt, you feel the torment. Or when you do the wrong thing and you feel the guilt. When we do wrong things in life, when we transgress, either against ourselves or against others, we feel pain and guilt, don't we? You feel it inside of you, right? How many of us would think that that's a blessing? And it's Allah, God Almighty, who gave us this nature to feel pain and guilt when we do something wrong or when we attach our hearts to the wrong things. Because just as physical pain, that's an internal alarm telling you, wake up. That pain is a pointer to something broken inside of you. So our job, just as you seek physical medicine, when we experience that guilt or pain, is to wake up and see what's wrong with me. Clearly, my heart is in the wrong place. It's broken. Something is happening and it needs treatment. Well, we learn in Islam that Allah, God Almighty, is the nurturer of the bodies, gives physical sustenance and provision. And similarly, He is the nurturer of the hearts and souls. So He flips us and takes us from condition to a condition, from a condition of constriction and feeling of that anxiety and distress when we do something wrong so that we are pointed to or that we get the message that we need to change our way and look at the one who created us. He's telling us, he's knocking our doors, he's telling us, wake up. How many of us would look at this as a message of affection from Allah? And you are okay, dear brothers and sisters. You're healthy. You're sound. As long as you have a healthy reaction when you do things that are wrong. It's okay to, to you know, all of us are going to make mistakes in this life. The question is, when you have that sense of guilt, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to just mask it, gloss over it and not pay attention? Are you going to say just as physical pain, this is a message. Allah is calling me, no matter how messed up my situation is, I better get up. And indeed, we learn in Islam that just as our mothers, your mother might be upset with you. She might kick you out of the house, right? But then you cry and you come crashing and knocking on the door. You might break down at the doorstep. What does she do at the end? She keeps the door open. 
tell them to come back in. She'll lift you up. Indeed, dear brothers and sisters, our journey with Allah is precisely this. He takes things away from us. He causes us feelings of, of constriction and anxiety so that we get the message that we need to be with Him. Allah's telling us, and He summarizes this in a beautiful surah in the Quran. He says, He says, by time that you're squandering, that you're wasting away, like the petals of the rose, they're going to wither. The day that goes will not come back. What are you doing with it? He says, by that time, indeed man, the human being, is in a state of loss. State of loss of what? It's actually a, a state of constant and active loss of everything. Loss of time, loss of youth. You're going to lose your youth. You're going to lose your beauty. You're going to lose everything that you're investing time in. Eventually, it will come to an end. It doesn't mean we don't work hard on it, but realize it's going to come to an end. He says, so everything will perish except those who have faith. But faith is nothing but mere words if it's not being acted on. Is it not true? How many of us say we care about God Almighty, we care about faith and spirituality? But the question is, what are we doing on a daily basis to contribute towards the growth of that thing? If it's a sacred priority, we have to pay attention to it. Most of us are experiencing that pain inside because we're looking for things to fulfill us, but not looking at the root thing that we need to pay attention to, where our hearts and souls need to spend time with. It is God Almighty, the only thing that lasts. We ask Allah Azza wa to make us among those who heed the lessons. And we ask Allah to make us among those who are granted from His mercy and forgiveness. <laughs> Your brothers and sisters, indeed one of the great blessings that we've received from our Creator is this, this, is this beautiful nature, this beautiful nature, what we call the fitra. Wherever we violate this internal nature of ours, something inside of you will tick and cause you pain and anxiety. Or any other negative feeling, it's a feeling of constriction. That's a healthy feeling. That's a pointer to something broken inside of you. The question is, are we going to learn the lessons and change our ways? Change is not going to just occur in our lives. Most of us, are, you know, our souls are screaming for help, but we're not doing anything about it. We're still grabbing onto the things that cause us pain. Believing in Allah, believing in God Almighty, and taking Him seriously, and indeed adoring Him and loving Him just as He adores us and loves us. To reciprocate with Him requires effort and energy. Change is not going to just happen. So if you care about spirituality and about your heart and soul, you have to do things that are spiritual. I ask you the question today, if you're feeling that guilt and pain, how many of us are hearing that internal voice telling you, come back? Come back before the rest of the petals wither. Because indeed 2013 will be gone. It will not come back. Maybe we're permitted to see it, maybe not. 2014 will come afterward. And before you know it, the petals that represent the years of your life will wither away and you're going to lose yourself one piece by piece, piece by piece, until your, until your entire life is gone. The question is, what have we taken with us from that very life? What have we spent our time and energy on? You are in, a, in, the, in, the, in the prime years of your life as young people, as young people. How many of us are so indifferent to those sacred priorities, our souls and hearts, whatever God means to you, who you are as a human being, where you're going, and how many of us claim that we love God, that we care about where we're going in this life, that we care about the hereafter, that it's really, really paramount in our lives, but our daily lives do not reflect that change or that sense of concern. Our lives, I'm afraid, are an expression of indifference. We're in a mode of indifference. Sure, we claim to have priorities, but our lives indicate that we don't care much about those priorities because we're still latching onto the things that causes that severe pain. That indeed, dear brothers and sisters, is the presence of life. And I want to conclude with something beautiful from the life of Prophet Muhammad. Speaking of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, speaking of physical pain and emotional pain, we hear that when he went to the city of Ta'if, north of Mecca, to share the message with the people, he was, he was abused to the point where they drove him out of the city throwing pebbles at him and stones, causing him physical injury. Physical injury that caused pain. And he experienced also you know, emotional torment as well because of the way he was treated. When he leaves the city, he sits under a tree with blood flowing out of his feet. What was his concern? 
Was it that, oh my goodness, I've been humiliated and insulted? Absolutely not. He looked instantly towards Allah Azza wa And listen to his words when he said, oh, oh my Lord, I submit to you a complaint about my own weakness. About the fact that people are insulting me and humiliating me. Who are you leaving to? Me, me to? Then he says, you are the most merciful of the merciful. You are the merciful one indeed. And your mercy means everything. And listen to the next statement when he said, because this summarizes his life. He says, I don't care what pain I'm experiencing. It doesn't matter what you've taken away from me. It doesn't matter what difficulties and challenges I've, get, I've been through as long as you're happy with me. That, dear brothers and sisters, is what we're talking about. The belief in Allah that is acted upon. Real state of connection with Allah. Not mere words, not lip service. He says, it doesn't matter what you take away from me. As long as you are happy with me. If you're happy with me, then that's it. I'm happy. Belief, dear brothers and sisters, means that when I want to put my hope, I put it on God Almighty first. It doesn't mean I don't work with others. But I have to see behind the shadows. God behind everything. When I want to fear, I fear the Lord. But not in the sense of being terrorized from the Lord. No. To have a sense of awe of Him. If I want to have awe of someone, I'm going to have it of Him. When I want to trust, I put my trust in Him first. And let my life on a daily basis reflect this. So I ask you in conclusion, if you really care about God Almighty and you adore Him and love Him, what have you done on a daily basis to prove that love? That should answer the question that defines the type of relationship you have. But realize, before you know it, the days are numbered. And every single day that we pass up, we're passing up an opportunity and precious moments to turn our lives around. around. Life change requires effort, energy, and an attitude of, I do care. If you don't have that sense of care, believe, me, believe it or not, that rose, petal by petal, will be gone. The very things that we adore will wither away. But the only one that alas is Allah. He kept His door open, waiting for us to knock on the door. And He's above comparisons and analogies. But remember your mother, she'll always take you back. God is waiting, saying, no matter what your situation is like, knock on the door, you'll find it open. And He'll embrace you and take you back anytime. But the question is, are we learning the lessons? Take time after this, after this event today. Go back and reflect on last year. Ask yourself, what is causing me pain? What is my state right now? Is it a constriction or openness? What is that pain causing you to think about? Is it making you think about you know, the fundamental lessons of life? Or are we not taking anything away from that sense of pain? We ask Allah to make us among the righteous. We ask Allah to enlighten us with understanding, wisdom, and insight. We ask Allah to bless us with uh, a sense of consciousness of Allah in this earth. We ask Allah to make us among those who take our lives seriously. We ask Allah to bless us with His mercy and forgiveness and compassion. We ask Allah to guide us to this great path and to make us among those who are acting as agents of mercy on this earth. Allahumma khfir lana wa rahamna wa afu anna wa tawalla amrana wa ahsan khalasana wa akhtim bil baqiyat salihati amalana Allahumma dina ila salatika al-mustaqim salat al-ladina anamta alayhim ghayri al-mabhuga alayhim wa al-dhalin ameen Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamu ala al-mursalim alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa akhmi s-salam الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر